Hey, and welcome to this second video here on the channel about GPS and geographic locations in Bubble. In the last video, we covered getting the GPS from a device. In this video, we're going to look at and actually what we returned from that getting is a latitude and longitude. In this video, we're going to look at two things. Number one, we're going to look at turning that latitude and longitude into a like a geographic location, like an address, right? So uh, if you've noticed in Bubble in the data types, there is geographic uh, location is actually one of the data types, kind of like text or number or uh, file, you know, for an image. Um, geographic location is actually a, a data type. And so we're going to turn that latitude and longitude into that data type. And then the second part of this video is that we're going to look at, um, I mean, once you have a bunch of things like with, with locations, right, you're going to kind of want to compare those, compare locations or um, it's very common in like, for example, in a dating app that's also on this channel, um, you know, you have users around you. Um, and in this video, we're going to look at, you know, maybe you're making an app for sports leagues and you're organizing all the teams in the area or players. Uh, in this example, is going to look at teams, but it worked just as well if these were players. Um, so let's dive in. If just to wrap up from real quick, a review of the last video, if you haven't seen that one, it's linked to in this video. Um, but this is just a recap of that is that this enable location services button, uh, ask for this location in the browser. And then here we can see that it goes out and gets that location here in this workflow shows a little alert. And then we were storing that in our database latitude and longitude. Um, here was where it went out and got it. And then here's where it, when it came back with it, we did some stuff. Okay, so let's look at the data first of what I have set up here and what I'm going to show in this example. And then you'll get an idea of what exactly it is. So basically, um, I have a bunch of places or teams in this league in this area in a couple different locations. And we're going to take a look at what it looks like to uh, search for those and only and this could also again work for players So if these were players if you only wanted players uh, within you know a uh, certain 50 miles or 50 kilometer radius of a, of a place to invite people but what I have done here is just uh, a quick tip that if you were looking to uh, get geographic locations um, You can go to this site. It is uh, latitude and launch dot net or latlong dot net and if you just click on places, then you get uh, latitude and longitude values that you can use during your testing with your apps. So just a quick little tip there, saving that now out here. Okay, so what we're gonna do here now over in our design tab, I'm actually gonna turn the visibility of this one off from last time. And I've got a whole nother UI built that is just a repeating group and what this repeating group does, we'll take a look at this UI. You've already looked at the data, right? So in the database, you saw those 10 teams and those teams are sitting there. And those teams, basically what we're doing, we are going out and getting them and we're not even using this filter. So I'll turn that off. So we're just searching for all the teams in the database and then we're returning them. And uh, let's see, we'll sort by team name descending no. So that way it's alphabetical, cool. So with that set up, basically we've also got this geographic box that we're gonna use for when we compare for searching. But for now, what I would like to do is show you once you have used a plugin like this one in the last video and, um, and that we reviewed here in this one, once you have a latitude and longitude value, you can, what we're gonna do here, Actually, I'll just delete this whole workflow out so you can kind of see it starting from scratch. Basically, I want to use this button so that we can uh, make changes to a thing. And we're going to change basically just the thing in the repeating group. So again, if we, if we were to uh, refresh this, we would see, okay, so here are all our teams. And the thing that we're going to change when this is hit is the headquarter location of the team. And so what you want to do is you want to go to calculate formula, coordinates to address, and then we're going to take this team's uh, latitude and this team's longitude. And then again, just a quick reminder, as you saw that, that data was already in here and I just pre-filled it in with just clicking around on that map that we saw earlier. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and run that workflow and we'll get some things filled in. Basically, if we click on each of these will verify that over in the database, 
we did indeed run a workflow on all that. So now here, if we refresh this data, we can see, boom, that these were all filled in. Amazing. So um, next up, we're going to take a look at how, um, how this would work to search for this. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I'm on my repeating group here. And here's what I'm going to do. Um, first off, this repeating group, it has the data that it just goes and it searches for all the teams. However, we want to set up a conditional where if the search value of the search box is not empty, meaning somebody's typing in it, we want to change the data source. And the data source now, we want to search for all the teams in the database where the headquartered location is within, let's just say 50 miles of Hmm, that's an odd error. One second, let's see, close that. Let's try that again. And it's probably, it's okay to have these errors because you might have them too and we can see how you could overcome them. So let's see. I'm on the repeating group, I'm looking at this conditional, I'm searching for stuff, and I'm not too concerned that this is doing this because I actually had this happen earlier, and we saw that little, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh the page here, And we'll see if we can't get something functional. Repeating group, this conditional, we're searching for teams. There we go. Okay, so that isn't that odd. That's a little bit of a something, something's going on there. But basically, now that we have this search box value, cool. So uh, basically, when just to recap this conditional, when this uh, value is not empty, meaning somebody's searching in there, then it's going to change the data source. And so uh, basically I've got these places set up a little bit around this little town called Escanaba, Michigan, a town that I went to high school in. Shout out to the UP. And so what we're gonna do here, I'm trying to find the data of uh, the teams. And we can see that team A through team D Z have these locations close by to this place. And then for our last thing in this video, we'll look at Chicago and we can see that team E through team J are all in the Chicago land area. So if you were wondering uh, how to work with GPS uh, coordinates, uh, let's say latitude and longitude coordinates rather, and getting into GPS locations and then filtering and actually using those uh, in some way that's uh, useful, then there you have it. So thanks for joining on this video. If you liked it, please like or subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in another video. Thank you.